Um, <laughs> my name is Jason Mack, um, and sitting across from me today is Jason Midkiff. Um, between two Jasons, we have David Hannon today. Um, David Hannon currently is the Associate Director of Bands up at the University of Central Oklahoma. Go Broncos! Um, but he is transitioning in his role. Um, he is a leading expert in our state on uh, this new hot topic that is coming up, uh, esports. And so we're here to pick his brain um, a little bit and figure out um, all the deets um, so that way we can give you guys as much resources as we can. So that way, hopefully, you can start up your own team, uh, get creative, give your kids another outlet to do some extracurricular stuff and stay connected within the school. Um, ladies and gentlemen, David Hannon. Yes. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> All right, David. Um, I have a couple questions for you. Um, just a few. Um, and first, do you just want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Please introduce yourself. Let the listeners know how you know. got here. What happened? What well, route I got in my wrong. van, and I drove <laughs> to, left uh, UCO this morning. Yeah. And then you guys offered me coffee, and uh, now I'm sitting down. Grabbed yeah. you off the street. So yeah, that's, that's how right. I got here. <laughs> that's, that's how we lure people in, rainy days and coffee. Rainy days and coffee. That's right. Yeah. Will you speak about, like, your experience at UCO? Sure. So I've been associate director of bands for 15 years. Five years ago, um, our dean from the College of Fine Arts and Design, she came to a faculty meeting, and she said that she wanted more uh, – diversity in the School of Music. She wanted more general campus students, average students, just wanted to, you know, start taking music classes because we were so spe spe uh, specific in the way of, like, just geared towards music students. The mm -hmm. only classes we had were, like, music appreciation. Mm -hmm. So I said, I got an idea. History of video game music. Nice. So I came up with a class, and it was an immediate success. We're teaching it two or three times a semester. So about three years ago, this growing interest in esports. So I had a group of students who were in the fighting game community in my class suggested that we embrace esports at UCO. So I said, okay, well, let's go after it. Once you guys are, like, uh, organized and ready to go, come back and see me, because I know League of Legends was, you know, a very popular mm -hmm. game and still mm -hmm. is a very popular game, as well as uh, the fighting game community. Um, so last year they came back to me, and they already had an Overwatch team, they had a League of Legends team, a Rocket League team, and they were already st starting to compete against the other universities. So I thought, it's time to go. <laughs> yeah. So um, we formed the student organization last September, and currently uh, we have over 230 members. Wow. Um, and it just basically has taken off since then. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Will you speak about, like, um, so for, for our, our listeners that aren't familiar with esports, um, this is not just video gaming, correct? Like, it's it's a little more in-depth than that. So there's mm -hmm. a little more high stakes. Well, let, okay, so one thing that I, the reason why I'm embracing this is because uh, the higher level thinking skills mm -hmm. that take place while you're in-game. I Overwatch six versus six. Um, last Sunday evening, our team took on uh, University of Minnesota. Nice. The decision making that has to go into that, and how the game just evolves and, and just changes, and how they have to quickly make decisions based upon their team chemistry. It speaks to a lot of that higher level thinking skills and those decision makings, and you have to live with the results of your decisions. Right. And and there's no, uh, ooh, someone hurt my arm or. Oh, the referee made a bad call. Right. You know, it's, it's like you win or lose based upon your decisions on how you play the game. Right. So there's that instant credibility. And um, that's one of the, things, one of the reasons why I really embrace eSports is because of what it does for the students. Sure, it, it's uh, like there's no subjectivity to it. It's, it's a level playing ground. Right. Uh, you, right there you can have a female player. You can have a male player. It's, it's all inclusive. Yeah. And it accepts everyone. Nice. So. And you said there are two hundred and o over two hundred members in the in the in the organization already. Yes. Um, will you kind of speak about um, like next steps? So taking it from a student organization to what does that manifest into? Okay, that's what we're doing right now. Okay. So formed the student organization last September. Um, a few of our teams already started to compete against other universities, so it's that transition into varsity status. Um, last April, 
um, the president of university asked for the nation to come present their idea, their concept of taking esports to the next level with a degree program. Um, so this is uh, an industry that's going to need a workforce. I know mm -hmm. I'm kind of like <clears throat> taking a detour here, but it kind of all fits in. Keep it going, David. Okay. So this is just like NBA, NFL, Major League Baseball. This is a, it's going to need a workforce. Sure. So I came up with the idea of a minor degree proposal in journalism and shoutcasting. Our media uh, department at the What's shoutcasting? Shoutcasting is basically play-by-play. -play. Oh, okay. Uh, NFL football game. <clears throat> Okay. You have a you have yeah. a caster and you have a color commentator and you have nice. a commentator, right? Okay. It's the exact same thing. Okay. The skill set you and the knowledge that you have to have to, oh, yeah. to shout cast a game is pretty impressive. Um, so journalism and shout casting. Um, so that kind of perked the curiosity of our administration and the business model um, for the arena that will be uh, that we're currently working on right now is based upon numerous things. First and foremost, I call it the three R's, which is recruitment. I think we're going to be able to recruit uh, a student who never really thought, oh, gee, you know what? I think I will go to college because I can do eSports. Right. Or yeah. I can learn how to play this game. Or I can go into project management. I can get a career in eSports. So the recruitment, retention. How can we retain more of our students? And I, thinking, I was just thinking eSports can actually give us that opportunity that once – that student, that new type of student comes in, they just might stay. Oh, absolutely. And then also based on revenue and what you can generate revenue through your uh, Twitch stream sure. uh, as individuals or a school yep. um, and also for the community of what we can do to give to the community and the community can you know, like enjoy uh, a, a, a cultural experience per se. Uh, so with this, er and then it's also going to be based upon um, research, um, and then also job placement and, and, and numerous things in community. So what, uh, with the design of the arena is, is that we're kind of embracing the gaming community in general. So there's going to be a competition stage for two teams to compete against each other, and it could be broadcast live. That way when we're working on the minor degree in project management, students who are taking the minor degree in project management are actually going to learn how to produce an event. There's going to be a shoutcast wow. room, so the students who want to go into journalism and shoutcasting can go into the shoutcasting mm -hmm. room and actually call the game and stream online on Twitch, nice. building their portfolio. Yep. So that we have that avenue, and then we're going to have computers on the um, on the floor, so we can actually have regional tournaments for high schools, mm -hmm. as well as universities can come to this facility and we can host tournaments. Nice. We can also yeah. open it up for middle school students. Friday fortnight. I mean, it's like, sure. okay, let's embrace yeah. the whole entire community. Yeah, I've reached out to the tabletop uh, gaming community, and we plan on host events for the tabletop gaming. Nice. Uh, we're going to have a VR station. We're actually going to open up with two VR stations so people can enjoy that. Um, so a lot of energy and a lot of synergy yeah, that this, this, this arena is going <laughs> to create. Um, so for me, I'm passionate about our students and creating opportunities for them to find um, a job. Sure. After they leave the, uh, yeah. after they leave school. Now, David yeah. Hannon, I, I've known you a long time. Um, whenever you came to UCO, I was a f freshman or sophomore there, um, and like if if we were to sit down 15 years ago, um, and you say, yeah, you know, I'm gonna <laughs> start this big old esports thing, like I would have been like, oh, okay, well, that sounds good, David Hannon, but uh, <laughs> how's that tie into any sort of background? Like, how, like, w when did you? get to the point where you were like oh dang like this is this, this this could be big like when when did that hit you it was a little bit of a process through uh last school year and seeing the excitement and enthusiasm just explode on the other university campuses and now the high schools um when we had the meeting at the president's cabinet and the excitement in the room, mm -hmm. of what the the vision of what this is going to do for UCO and for our community and for Edmond and for the state of Oklahoma, they were very excited. And yeah. that excitement kind of transferred over to me. I thought, sure. okay, here we go. <laughs> well, go. So I mean, that <laughs> afternoon, the president of the university, uh, you know, grabbed me in the hall. I mean, I was in Nye University Center, and the president said, I think we found this place for you. And I'm like, wow, okay, <laughs> two hours after the meeting. <laughs> out of place. Oh, this is great. Um, 
the upper administration sent me to UB Tech 2019, which is the largest um, information technology conference for university um, IT um, specialists. Uh, they had an esports tract. Hmm. And I thought, okay, I'll start taking some classes on esports. Well, come to find out, I, I knew it was about just as much as the other people <laughs> presenting yeah. because it's so it's new, so new. Yeah. and yep. so yep. cutting edge. And then I started talking about the degree programs that I was proposing. And they're like, wow, do you want to serve on our National Association of Esports uh, Coaches and Directors? Sure. sure. We just formed not, right? it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. well, okay. I guess I'll be part of you guys now. So now I'm I'm presenting at UB Tech 2020 nice. in Las Vegas next year yeah, on me. how to create a curriculum for the universities uh, in, uh, in esports. So, Look I mean, you, man. it's been drinking out of a fire hose, sure. yeah. but I've embraced it. And I've yeah. kind of, like, always known the gaming culture. Sure. I mean, I grew up a gamer. Right. I've played, you know, games my whole entire life. Yeah. So it's like I get to be a kid again. Right. David, can you just talk briefly on, so, I mean, you're going to have those people that, well, it's just a game, you know, my kids are playing games, it doesn't go anywhere, you know, my generation, we're at, got kids coming through, started out on Atari, moved to Nintendo, <laughs> but, like, you grew up, like, there's nothing after that. Like, can you talk about now, like, these kids, like, the whole industry that's out there, all the different paths, I mean, you've mentioned the journalism, Okay. The shout casting or sports casting, those things. But even just within the industry, how kids at middle school, high school, how this can be a whole career path for them. That it's not just wasting time at a game instead of going outside sure. or whatever we've said for years. I think a lot of parents were a little apprehensive about their children playing video games until this last July. Where a, what was it, a 13-year-old kid, 14-year-old kid, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, There's the story is out there, won $3 million playing Fortnite. Yeah. 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 Okay. It's parents, okay, I think it's okay for us to play video right. games now. Okay. Uh, <laughs> get back on those video games. <laughs> the, uh, the viewership for one of the eSports titles, League of Legends, yeah. the uh, World Championships uh, last year. They sell out the Staples year, Center. Yeah. Sold out in 15 minutes. Yeah. The, 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 the World Championship audience space was larger than the Super Bowl. Viewership for esports has now passed Major League Baseball and NBA. Yep. It's projected that the um, revenue stream for esports on the college scene in two years will be greater than NCAA. Hmm. Yeah. It's growing at such a, an extreme rate. Is that just due to like sponsorships and stuff like that? Like, are people trying to just throw money it's at this? People thing? watching it on Twitch. Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay. The, the viewership on Twitch. And now students, high school students, have their own Twitch account and they broadcast their, yeah. their, their games. Uh, Which, for our viewers that are not familiar with Twitch, Twitch is like a, a live streaming service. Mm -hmm. um, it used to be just in .TV, but mm -hmm. then they were bought out and switched over to, to Twitch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so you can view, you can stream uh, live sports, um, live events, um, all for free, just on your computer. Like, you don't have to have a subscription or anything like that, so... Sure. Twitch. And as the high schools develop their programs, um, just like you have a, a head football coach, mm -hmm. basketball coach, baseball coach, you're going to need someone with a little esports knowledge to be able to coach. Yeah. And if I'm an administrator of public school, I think I'm going to, I would prefer to hire an, an individual who's certified teacher to be working with our students, especially after school hours, right. and possibly has a coaching certificate. So that's the next. Uh, thing I'm working on is I'm working on a degree program for journalism shoutcasting, project management with the College of Business, and a coaching certificate with the College of Ed. Good job, so um, <laughs> as, as, as this eSports initiative grows and expands in all the universities, think about the number of people that it's going to take to run these programs. Oh, They're going to have to have a unique skill yeah. set. Yeah. Uh, I know Walmart in, in Tulsa now has an eSports arena. I'm going to go up there in a few weeks, and I'm going to find out, well, who, who runs this facility? Mm -hmm. uh, how many IT specialists do you mm -hmm. have? Do you have people who are knowledgeable with eSports run this facility, or do you just have, like, your average employees? Right. I, I'm wondering if it's going to be a, a unique skill set that, that they're going to hire to run those arenas. And as cyber cafes have been around in Asia and Japan mm -hmm. for numerous years, mm -hmm. I think here in the United States that we're going to see explosion of eSports cafes yep. and the workforce is going to take to, to run that. Yep. Uh, you know, we have the Dallas, um, forgive me, I'm, I'm a loss of words. What's the professional eSports team in Dallas? They play in Arlington uh, eSports Stadium. Dallas Fuel, 
Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Well, pull it We're up real quick. We're not going to correct you. Dallas. Is it Dallas Fuel? Yeah. Okay. So the Dallas Fuel. So think about what it takes. I've been down to the Arlington um, Esports Stadium, and think about the people that it takes yeah, to, to run that to events, run yeah. one of those events. Yeah. So are we gonna? So Philadelphia has this. Yeah. San Francisco has it. So are we gonna see explosion in all of the cities? Just like we have Oklahoma City Thunder, are we going to have the Oklahoma City whatever, right. whatever, mm-hmm. name it, esports team playing? Those days, are th- it's coming. Yep. Yep. I mean, yep. Yep. people say esports, it's what's next. Sure. No, esports is now. Can you speak about that kind of hierarchy? Um, so, like, we talked about a 13-year-old kid making $3 million uh, for <laughs> playing Fortnite. Um, the there are local tournaments uh, for, for gaming. Um, I know that Oklahoma City or Oklahoma Christian had like the River Rumble. Yes. Um, where it had cash prizes. Um, is, is, is there a major league of esports and then works down to like the college rankings and then the high school rankings? Or Right now it's just uh, professional teams okay. and then the university team. So our Overwatch team, real quick to go into a little bit of history, um, we compete on the TESPA network, okay. um, the governing body for uh, for Overwatch. It's Blizzard, so TESPA. So we compete on that uh, governing body. Um, Collegiate Star League, um, our Rocket League team, competes on their circuit. Okay. So there's not just one governing body. I know NCAA right. voted no to accept esports right. last year, in which we're kind of thankful. Uh, because NCAA needs to make some changes, sure. uh, in which they are. It seems like they're starting okay. to make some changes that are a benefit to their for the college athletes. Nice. And so NCAA will readdress that in about four years, mm. whether or not they want to take on eSports again. Uh, but right now, and then Riot Games, they have mm. their own governing body, so our League of Legends team will compete on that circuit. I think I just like totally took a wrong turn on that conversation. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Well, no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> what was the original question? <laughs> the original question was, like so um like the Dallas Fuel, like what mm-hmm. what what game do they specialize in? Are they Overwatch or um Overwatch is one of their top titles, yes. Okay. Yep. Um and so like so for our, for our viewers that once again aren't familiar with esports, um how many common games are played on the professional level are there about six of them like overwatch rocket league madden on the professional circuit yeah so mm-hmm. counter-strike global offensive which is very very popular in europe okay, which, um, is, which is a fighting game it's a right? so it's a it's first person shooter, shooter team-based mm-hmm. yep. shooter um it, a little more difficult for the high school to embrace it because it is there's a lot of guns a little bit of right, a yeah. violence sure. in the game. So, oh, for high schools and for universities, Overwatch is so, so cartoon based, and there's no blood and gore. So, you, mm-hmm. it's a much better title for college and and for high schools. League of Legends, yep. Um, yep. Counter Strike Global Offensive, Overwatch, Rocket League, which is you know three versus three soccer, yeah. <laughs> which yeah. makes a nice bridge for sure. for sports. Um, and then uh, Rainbow Six Siege. Okay. Which is another kind of counter first person shooter, yeah, mm-hmm. first person shooter game, uh, and then the fighting game community, okay. whether it be Tekken, Smash Brothers, or Smash Brothers or, or is really Mortal big Kombat. in the state, yeah. Right? So, yeah, yep, Smash Brothers is very popular in the high schools. Yeah, so. in the professional scene, um, one of our students, um, he just traveled to California. He's one of the best players in the region, and uh, he finished within the top fifty of a worldwide competition. Wow. So, in, and in what, what title was that? That was Smash. That was Smash Smash Brothers. Brothers. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Okay. So if your kiddos ask for any of these titles for Christmas, remember that you are setting them up for success in their future. (laughs) Get them on those games at least. How how often do your kids practice? Okay. College kids. We do have a minimum GPA requirement for all game captains and for everyone who wants to be in a leadership role is 3.0. Okay. If you want to be a team member, you have to maintain 2.75. Nice. Which is higher than right. the minimum requirement right. for the university. Absolutely. Um, our Overwatch team, they practice, it could be four to five hours a day. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. And they do that off campus though, right? They do that on their own? Yes, which is kind of difficult because you're not playing on a level playing field. Uh, you'd we speak to that? Like, okay, so 
because some people have fast internet, some people uh, don't. Sure. Some people have a high ping, some people have a low ping. When you play online against another university, you want the lowest ping possible sure. with the quickest internet speed that you can you know, have. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons why a lot of universities and high schools are quickly getting into the arenas because uh, at UCO, we'll have our dedicated uh, right. trunk line, yeah. and then we'll have a very low ping, and then we can compete against the other universities at a, at a level playing field. Okay. It puts you at a disadvantage when you have a higher ping, your latency, and by the time you see someone coming around a corner, it's you might be late. seeing them yeah. a millisecond later than what the other person is. Right. So there's a, an advantage. Huh. So Or disadvantage. Um. <laughs> Once again, associate director of <laughs> bands. Yes. <laughs> is now worried about esports ping ratio. <laughs> I mean, all those, I mean like I said, 15 years ago, if you would have said, hey, Mac, what do you want to be whenever you grow up? I, I, I told you what I want to be. I yeah. asked you what you want to be whenever you grow up. And <laughs> I didn't know that it was going to take you down this esports path. But like I said, it sounds I'm like you are the person for the job. I'm just embracing <laughs> it. I right. mean, it's, we're in a culture shift. Right. And. It, you know, instead of looking, okay, what's the next big thing? You right. know, I mean, or what are they going to do first? What What is this institution right. going to do? Well, I, I, no, I'm done. I'm 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 done making uh, waiting for other people to make the sure. move. I I want to blaze the trail for others to follow nice. with this esports arena that we're opening. This is a unique uh, vision. Mm -hmm. When I was at UB Tech uh, 2019 in Orlando this last year. I, I was in a meeting with Boise State, with um, Rogers uh, State, uh, Robert Morris out of Chicago, mm -hmm. University of, uh, of Full Sail that just opened up their 12,000 square foot arena. Wow. What I did was is I picked their brains and said, tell me about your, your arena and what do you like most about it and what could you do to improve? And one thing I heard everyone say is, I wish it was off campus and we can serve the community. Mm. Okay, so community. Got it. Yep. I wish that we would have thought about how we could use our shoutcasting room, control room to work together. So as we do it, develop a degree program like you would like to do at UCO, that could, we can better serve the students. Okay, I wish we would have done a competition stage so we actually have two teams rather than just one team. So I took all of those those comments mm -hmm. and I put them all together and we designed the arena. It's a very unique uh, layout that we have in this arena. I'm, I, I, I wholeheartedly believe that other universities will look at this arena and say, that's who we should model right. over yeah. after. Yeah. So. so what type of, uh, you know, most our membership is K through 12 school, so it's going to be junior high, high school. What kind of resources do you have for them or will you have for them if they're interested in looking into this, getting their feet wet, what they need? Sure. What, are, what do you got there? Well, in the gaming community, we, we, uh, we use Discord. Uh, you can download it on your on your phone. You okay. can access it on your computer. It's basically how gamers communicate. Join Discord, and it's a whole new world. So I started uh, with one organization. That was our esports at UCO. Now I have the National Association of Esports Coaches and Directors. Now I'm uh, involved with NACE. I'm also involved with TESPA. I'm also involved with Oklahoma Esports League, mm -hmm. OESL. They have a Discord. Um, server that is the K through 12 Oklahoma esports league, mm -hmm. and that membership is growing yeah. daily. Yeah. So I would I would get on Discord and I would send O E S L and uh, a friend request and just start introducing yourself. Hey, I'm so and so. I I teach at this school. We're thinking about getting esports started. Please help. And sure. you know what? The one thing I really like about this gaming community is that if you ask someone, please help. There'll be like a thousand people going, just helping you and wanting to see it succeed. Yeah. So it's really cool that yeah. we have so many different passionate people that are involved with this process. And the cool thing is, is that uh, I'll get a phone call from another university and they said, yeah, okay, so I'm the dean of, uh, of so-and-so and I have to do this esports thing. I said, what's your history in esports? I don't know. I played a couple of games, but I'm, <laughs> I've, I've got to spearhead this. Or I talked to another high school coach and the, uh, be, it was amazing to me yeah. the number of music people, yeah. band directors yeah. that are turning into esports yeah. coaches now. Yeah. Uh, one of our our former st uh, students, David Deal, is yeah. now the esports coach at his school. That's fun. Uh, it's <laughs> such a diverse background. Yeah. It's like, well, what do you do? Well, I write grants, and now I'm esports coach yeah. at the university. I mean, it's just kind of cool how it's uh, how it's all evolved. Um, there are numerous companies out there that would uh, who are tr tremendous help. 
uh, one of the things that the people they struggle with is is finding the co right contact uh, information for like what is the computer mm -hmm. um, and working mm -hmm. with your administration mm -hmm. and how we're going to get this thing started. So okay. um, I have some friends. I just, I'm not doing a commercial for them, but uh, I met uh, Byte Speed. Brought to you Gra by Byte Speed. Uh, yeah, <laughs> by Byte Speed Gravity <laughs> Gaming. Sure. Uh, I met them uh, at UB Tech 2019 yeah. and just developed a great relationship. They are all about uh, gaming yeah. and, and education. Yeah. Um, so I, I do know that uh, there's a few schools here in Oklahoma that have already used their services. They mm -hmm. actually have this this packet of how to start an esports organization on your high school campus. Um, uh, so I kind of help them with that packet, and it's all ready to go. I have that packet, so if nice. they can always email me or right. contact me, and I can and I can share it yeah. with them as too as well. We'll have that in the show. So notes. yeah, that's a Did I answer your question? Yes. Did yeah. I mean, that's that's the ways for them to start and. Um, yeah, because like on this podcast we'll have show notes. For the those easiest things. thing to do is is just to convert a classroom into yeah. like a, an esports facility. Mm -hmm. I mean, basically, you really need like thirteen computers. Since the biggest title is six versus six, if you right. just had you know the twelve plus a, a backup or a right. spare that you can use for uh, yeah. either shoutcasting uh, or maybe like fourteen computers. For fourteen computers, you can easily start an esports um, organization. Um, with like kids practicing and stuff, like if it's okay, like a six v six platform, um, w would they would each would there be two teams of six that play each other, or would they go play some randos? Or oh yeah, you can you can get six versus six on your campus if you have an A team and a B team, mm -hmm. or you can scrim against other high schools yeah. uh, constantly on OESL on the Discord. I'm seeing hey, anyone want to scrim today? Yeah. We, uh, we'll be practicing from three to four thirty, um, and we yeah. can scrim during in that time. You know, some an, uh, Overwatch game can take fifteen to twenty thirty minutes maximum. Uh, League of Legends, you know, 25 to 45, mm -hmm. just depends on how <laughs> good a team right. is or how <laughs> bad a team is. Right. But uh, th a lot of the high schools scrim against yeah. other uh, schools. Yeah. And and Smash Brothers goes real quick. Oh, yeah. The, the, those games. Yeah, but Smash yeah. has to be local. Okay. Yeah, that has to be local. You can't really do that over the um, over internet. Right. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Okay. So. Um, so we talked about startup. And the cool thing is, is that if, if you're scrim in, in, in your institution, you can record it, and then you can analyze the uh, – you play it back, and your team can just sit back and, sit back and watch it, and the coach right. can sit there and say, all right, do you see this decision right. you made? That right. was a bad choice. A watch and film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See where the referee made the bad call here? No, right. I'm just <laughs> 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 There's a referee. <laughs> um, I mean, what else do you want to say about it? Is there anything else that you, yeah. you want to say, you want to get out there, or anything you want to plug or – what else you got here, David Hanna? It's your I, time to shine. Well, I do know uh, that we are currently looking at how we can um, recruit more competitive players. I'm sorry. Yeah, we talked about some scholarships. scholarships. Yeah. That is, I should know more in just a few weeks. I do know that uh, the university is going through a realignment, and you can find this online. Uh, based upon your GPA, uh, we're going to be able to offer scholarships based on GPA and ACT score. Hmm. So that is something to look at. That's going to be coming online for the University of Central Oklahoma that we're really excited about. That's so, really cool. Uh, but as a for players, I uh, want to be able to attract more competitive players yeah. as well as casual gamers. Sure. It's, to me, it's not all about the competition team. It's all about creating a, a culture, creating a, 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 a place that embraces everyone. But Whether if you're just learning how to play a video game or you just want to play it just to de-stress <laughs> you know we want to create an, a, a place for for all the university students nice. and for people in our community to go and they feel a part of and they feel accepted and, and part of that gaming culture yeah. well like talk about it's a great retention oh, even absolutely. if you're not serious if you're just casual to have that place to have that connection to the university yes. yep. to want to stay have something that you enjoy mm -hmm. i mean doesn't matter what it is if you have creating a 24-hour vibe on yeah. the bill of the institution yeah. is really important yes when's the anticipated opening date for the arena Looking for a soft opening on May 1st. Okay. It's a um, great day, by the way. It's my birthday. That's your birthday. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. That's great. Call now I know what I'm going to do. Yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll be able to um, <laughs> finalize a partnership with the YMCA. Okay. Um, we would like what to, is that looking like? Uh, we would like to host uh, tournaments for them as well as summer camps. 
and, and give yeah. back to the community. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> really and good. then we Amazing. also like to, to host our own summer camps mm-hmm. um, for uh, high schools and for middle school students. Why not give back to the community, right? Yeah, dude, this yeah. thing's big. This thing's yeah. going to be big. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, I reached out to a local tournament host in the fighting game community, and we're looking at doing two nights a week in the fighting game community, the tabletop gaming community. Um, I, I, I think on a nightly basis, this place is going to be pretty busy. And then just for the for the general campus students, you know, another thing I was thinking about is like, how can we help our um, overseas students? They, they can't bring their gaming PC over with them, right? Right. So yep. let's create an arena for them too. Yeah. Give them a place so they can just come over and and just enjoy time, kind of yeah. like because still have that uh, yeah. connection. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, well, David Han, thank you for joining us today. Um, sure. I know that uh, it was very low stakes, um, <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully you had a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Um, thank you. Um, we I enjoyed having right? this. Great information. Like I said, yeah. it's such, such new stuff, cutting edge, such potential in it, such a future in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We hope it's that a lot of other schools take advantage of this opportunity, yeah. um, kind of strike while the iron's hot, mm-hmm. um, get their own local chapters going on, create their own esports teams. Um, so that way they can start competing and get those kids in the pipeline mm-hmm. um, to the workforce, man. <laughs> it's yeah. good stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I do know. I was just on the website just a few days ago. Um, there's over thirteen thousand jobs available in the esports industry. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. This is an emerging market yeah. that yeah. it's going to need a tremendous workforce. Yeah, we got to so. fill it. Yep. Okay. Um. Between Two Jasons is uh, signing off. Look for us next uh, week. Hit up School Zoned uh, podcast. Like us on Facebook. Share it with your friends. Um, Give us a rating. Give us a (laughs) rating. Preferably a better (laughs) one, but we won't twist your arm. Right. Don't give us a rating. Just subscribe so that way you can get more of these great podcasts. We'll bring you (laughs) more insight from across the state uh, on late-breaking topics. 